Hello Global Politics students. Today we will be looking at, again, the national interest. Today we will be focusing on economic prosperity. In this video I'm going to discuss obviously what economic prosperity means as well as giving you some examples of what it means and then we will cover also some of the key knowledge. The key knowledge for this um, part of the course is to look at factors that shape the national interest. So the factors are essentially why does the country try to pursue this type of national interest? So, you know, why is China trying to pursue economic prosperity? As well as looking at the effectiveness of the state in achieving this national interest. So this is where we would have to evaluate. We would have to talk about how it's been effective and then also how it hasn't been effective in achieving that national interest. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is from the study design and essentially economic prosperity is about a state have, having economic stability and being able to build wealth and its welfare for its citizens. If they are able to build wealth and welfare, then that will help them maybe achieve other national interests. It may help build regional relationships because it will mean that they will be able to trade with others and it may even with, in the case of China, may help achieve regime security, which will also create national security. So economic prosperity can help support some of the other national interests. If the country is able to build wealth, then they will be able to achieve some other things as well. So it's, it's really important for a state to have economic prosperity. So Let's talk about how China has specifically tried to build prosperity. So there's a few different examples that I have covered in my class. The first is China's solar industry. Um, China has a huge and, and really has made you know, some great progress with solar industry. Um, this came about in around 2013. Um, they decided to expand their renewable energy industry and decided to do this through exporting it and then also domestically installing it, which helped create some jobs. In 2020, the, the actual solar industry is, was valued at $15 billion and produced 63% of the world's solar panels. So quite a remarkable effort there. This has helped achieve economic prosperity because it has created local jobs, has been able to be transported overseas, which can then increase China's GDP and the gross national income. Now, so that's what they are doing to achieve economic prosperity. We need to also think about factors. So why? Why are they achieve, are trying to achieve economic prosperity? For China, they have an ideology that you could probably use to talk about this. And that ideology are the, or is the twin centenary goals. So the twin centenary goals, something some of you may have heard about before, but uh, it's part of the Chinese dream. And that is by 2021, Xi Jinping said that you know, by the centenary of this finding of the um, CPC, that they would build a moderately prosperous society in all respects. So this means that China's development would improve the lives of people, particularly those in poverty by 2021. In some aspects, they probably have achieved this. And then in 2049, in the centenary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, that they will build a moderately socialist country that is prosperous, strong, democratic, culturally advanced and harmonious. And this means that China will probably at this point be a superpower and will continue to sustain economic development. So that is the twin centenary goal. That is why China is trying to pursue economic prosperity. It probably could be used for almost any example you talk about with, with this particular national interest. You know, why is China trying to perceive, trying to achieve um, and build wealth of, and welfare for its citizens? Well, the reason why is because of the twin centenary goals. And that's really why. Also, the Communist Party needs to continue generating revenue. They need to continue providing for their citizens. They need to stay in power. In order, in order to do this, they need to continue to create and develop economically. They have a population of 1.3 billion people, sorry, 1.38 billion people. 
they need to continue to grow economically if they want to stay in power. So that's really important to China. Another example of what they are doing to try and achieve economic prosperity, well, it's the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. This is a competing bank really with the IMF. They are trying to help support states. Um, they have quite a large amount of money available and a large amount of capital. About $100 billion is available for states. Um, they wouldn't give, I don't, I don't know how much they can actually give, but they have $100 billion in capital. Um, 104 states are involved and it does allow China to achieve economic prosperity because they can, that means that they can increase their exports, they can create some jobs in other countries and there's projects they can develop with other countries that are in the AI, AIIB. So that's another example of what China's trying to do there. I think it's also been important for the Belt and Road Initiative. A lot of the loans that they've provided has been through the AIIB. Another example of China trying to achieve economic prosperity is through the South China Sea. Obviously, we've seen China try to develop sovereignty and actually, actually assert their so sovereignty in this area through its militarization. And part of the reason why they are doing that is because of the economic gains that you can receive in this area. There's 11 trillion, 11 trillion barrels of oil. It has 10% of the world's fisheries and 30% of global trade flows through these waters. So that's important for China for economic prosperity, but also for resource security. Um, a number of states also see the importance of this area. So that's why so many are trying to get into it. And the reason why they are also doing that is it's geopolitically quite important. The, it, the South China Sea supports one third of the world's maritime shipping. Um, and you know, $3 trillion worth of trade goes through this area, as well as the obvious um, rich resources in this area. So it is important for China to maintain and receive this area. Um, they need to ha have the sovereignty of this area if they want to continue to develop economically. So why is China trying to, trying to pursue this in the South China Sea? for economic gains, well, it's geopolitically quite important and is rich with resources. So there's a few things you could say there. It's important to also evaluate. So we need to say how China has not achieved economic prosperity. And for China, that is probably, probably they are probably not gonna be achieving economic prosperity because of income inequality. The richest 1% in China own one third of the state's wealth, whilst the poorest 25% own just 1%. That was found in a study by Peking University. So, you know, I think that's an important point to note that China, you know, despite some of their, you know, some of their gains with economic prosperity, there is still quite a significant gap between the richest and the poorest. Um, so that's something to mention. That's all today for economic prosperity. I hope that was helpful. In the next video, I will discuss regional relationships and what China is trying to do to achieve it, the factors that shape that, as well as some examples and you know how they may not have achieved it. I hope this was helpful and see you soon.